Chairman Mike Harris, as we often say, TNS is more than just a football club, although we will come to that in due course. But let's talk TNS Foundation first of all. Some great things going on in that particular part of the business. Yeah, very much so. Um, over the last five years, we've invested well in excess of £85,000 into the good causes that um, the Foundation deliver on. And um, we've got some exciting plans to expand that. And uh, as you can see at the Games, more and more uh, causes arrive at the game, whether it's supporting young people, disadvantaged people, uh, helping bring um, uh, 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 health to the elderly, um, and, and just generally being what we would call a good partner to, to the local area. Um, football's a, a major interest sport uh, and has a place to, to play in the community, bringing smiles to people's faces. You know, you're never going to please everybody, but um, now we'd like to hope that we've been a, a good catalyst for, um, for getting into the community with, again, very limited budgets compared to perhaps other um, uh, organisations. But the work that Jill does with the Foundation is, is absolutely exemplary. And you mentioned Jill there, that was my next point, Mike. There are some very good people that work in TNS Foundation. Very, very much so. And um, uh, it's, um, uh, it's got a broad church of, of, of people. Um, all have their own stories. Um, and, it, and it's good to see that they're um, uh, being able to engage positively, take their skills, and, and to put something in a way that they can feel that they're achieving good for the community. And I mean, it's difficult to list all the things that they're doing in one go, but I, I saw Friday, we, we, we looked down a long list of projects, albeit quite small, two or three thousand pounds here, two or three thousand pounds there, but seemed to be affecting many different um, uh, community types, different people types from the Oswestry area and, uh, and, and you know, so from from Chirk to Western Rin to um, to um, to the town itself, uh, there are numerous projects going on in parallel, and um, uh, we're increasing the work we're doing with the local schools, um, which is again being driven by um, football as the as the catalyst. But we're taking multi sports um, and using that sport to try and encourage children to either adjust their behaviours. Uh, to take a healthier way within life and to generally be good people for the local community. And then on to the football club itself, Mike. We did have a, a few poor results by TNS standards uh, towards the back end of last year. But as we talk right now, four games in the JD Welsh Premier League, four victories, 18 goals scored, non conceded. That's a pretty impressive statistic in itself. It's not a bad statistic at all. I thought you were about to say they were poor results, beating Druid 7-0 and, and uh, Newtown 4-0. Um, uh, no, it's, uh, it's been great. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, uh, we're in a very enviable but difficult position. Um, if we win, people claim that you're, you're supposed to win, uh, which we, I can tell you, we have no God-given right to, um, to win um, any, any, anything. You, you've got to work very hard for it. And if you... If you lose, oh well, it's it's um, it, you're not any good anymore. But um, yeah, I think I think the league is is, is a strengthened. One or two clubs have, have come out of the pack and and pushed a little bit harder. Uh, I think it's set up a uh, a really interesting um, uh, second half to the season. Uh, we're very confident. Yeah, we, uh, I think that we've had one or two bad rubs of the green. Um, some t funny decisions have, have happened during the games. Perhaps we've had players sent off in, in, in occasions which look a little bit harsh. Uh, we've had goals ruled out which perhaps shouldn't have been, and uh, and, and perhaps penalties awarded against us which again perhaps have been, you know, not as what they should be. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, we have a big belief that we've got to score more goals than the other team. So um, yes, we, uh, we we took a, a little bit of a run of. Uh, average to poor results, but yeah, I'm not going to say that it was us on a down stage. It was probably other teams doing better than they than they've done before. So um, uh, we're going to hopefully up our game. Uh, we're looking at possibly bringing in one or two 
new players and uh, I also um, think that Scott's got um, a full squad to pick from again so um, yeah it's, uh, I think the, the football side is going to be very interesting over the next 11 games. And as we look ahead to the second phase in the JD Welsh Premier League there are some tough games for the New Saints ahead but equally so tough games for our challengers as well so points will be dropped along the way. Yeah I think everyone knows that when the league swaps it's the business end of the league um, you know we've, we've been there before um, I'm not saying that that makes it any easier but we do know what's expected and, and if you look at the last time when we lost the league we really uh, we at the split we were probably 12 possibly 13 points behind Bangor City and we closed that gap down to making it a last day um, spectacle which Bangor came out on top on that occasion um, so we know where the business end starts uh, the other clubs are going to realise that the business end starts for them whether they're a challenger or whether they want to be a challenger to the challenger because all six clubs that, that uh, start the second half all will have Europe in their sights so there won't be any easy games uh, in, in, in the pack because everybody wants those spaces for Europe which is an amazing prize and is, and is, a, and is a, a, a great um, in, inducement for any club or any player to want to play well because they do well they can play in the, the biggest club competitions in the world so I don't expect any easy games at all in the second half but I also don't expect any easy games for our challengers easiest either so um, if we um, keep uh, everybody fit uh, and we train hard then I, I believe at the end of the season we'll be challenging there for the top spots but hey it's, it's, it's in the hands of the lads um, and obviously Scott and Evo to, uh, to make sure we keep that pressure on and if anyone does want that crown they're going to absolutely know that um, they've got a, a big job on their hands over the next three months. And when I say the points will be dropped, that's not necessarily in reference to the New Saints, but rather that the teams who are challenging TNS also have to play each other. And I guess, Mike, this is to TNS's advantage, because we've been there, we've done it, seven consecutive titles. The challengers, and as it looks at the moment, it is a, a three-horse race for the title. This is new territory for them in many ways. It is. I, I wouldn't even say it was a free horse race. I think that you could even look to uh, fourth and fifth place that could uh, come out of the pack um, and still be the challenger or the, 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 the winner of the title. There's very few points between anybody and with the fact that each team plays each other twice, those two games, home and away, are very, very important. I mean, we, we will be going out making sure that we don't drop silly points in, in, in these last in the last ten games um, and I'm sure the others will as well so uh, a draw can make a, a, a big difference you know? and, and as you saw Friday night Newtown's game plan was to put a, a very tight packed defence to try and hold out for a draw um, which on this occasion didn't work for them but um, you can see they're going to be no, no um, easy team to beat and I, I think that um, they will probably hold the key to probably um, teams who emerge either as challengers or winners. They'll be a difficult team to, um, to get over, particularly um, at Newtown. And I'm sure they're more than capable of taking points off anybody who will be in the top six. So all being well, Mike, we win the title. We're in the Champions League 2019-2020 season. Are we going to see another Mike Harris road trip across Europe? Regardless of what competition we end up in, if we were lucky enough to get into Europe, who knows? We have, you know, the first job is to, is to get into Europe, whether that's the Europa League or the Champions League. And uh, should we uh, uh, make that journey, I'm sure there will be a road trip. Because for those who perhaps aren't aware of what we're talking about, we travel to Macedonia, right across the continent of Europe. Chairman Mike Harris, Bought himself, if I described it as a banger, that's perhaps not being too unkind. Yeah, you I'm, went and bought uh, yourself well, a this, car. This, this banger was green. <laughs> <laughs> the other banger you're referring to is in blue. <laughs> you, you went and bought yourself a vehicle. 
that had already done its fair share of miles mm. and you and a few companions travelled across mainland Europe and eventually, I don't know how, but eventually you made it into Macedonia for the Champions League. Did and, and it was fully licensed as well. <laughs> but you did have one or two close encounters on the way with border guards. We did actually. We did get into a little bit of trouble at um, uh, the border into um, Macedonia, but was uh, and, and and actually into um, into Serb. Serbia possibly wasn't too bad. Uh, the Macedonian border was a strange one, and so was the um, uh, and so was the border from uh, Austria into yeah into uh, into Croatia. Uh, we we had uh, failed to buy one of the little ten euro tickets where it says buy a ticket to use the road, and we thought, well, hey, <laughs> we tried to play daft. To our to our dismay, we did get um, we did get caught at the border as we crossed. I think mean, we got ourselves a fifty euro fine. But what was the most amazing one was when we crossed one of the other borders, which for fifty euros seemed to go into the pocket of the border guard and not and not into the machine. But then we won't say any more about that. Well, Mike, you got there eventually, but you did take the wise move to fly back home. You left the car there, and if I remember correctly, it was a waiter in the hotel who suddenly one day found himself the owner of a Mike Harris vehicle. Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, it was always planned to take it one way. Um, we were hoping that um, uh, the, the vehicle would have been continued to have been used if we'd have won that round and then gone from where we drove it to the, the next away game. But sadly, um, uh, we didn't get that extra goal. And... Uh, so um, the waiter, uh, the waiter is now permanently looking after the car. Perhaps if we get Macedonia next year, he'll pick us up from the airport and take us to the, take us to the hotel. But he, he seemed very pleased. Uh, he couldn't do enough for us. So the steak was extra juicy and so was the extra bottle of wine we got. I believe you gave him the car, Mike. Yeah, we did, yeah. Well, you have a BMW outside the building right now as we talk. If you'd like to hand me the keys, Give me a couple of days to get insured and I'm your man. All oh, right, no problem. If you can give it a little clean rev, that wouldn't be all bad news either.